I find I've been spending a lot of time around K-19 lately. No, I'm not talking about the Soviet nuclear submarine, but rather the gate at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport, where Japan Airlines flight JL-8009 with four times weekly service to Tokyo Narita boards from. As I've taken this flight multiple times over the last several weeks, in both first class and business class, I thought it might be interesting to do a different type of video today, one where I compare the two onboard classes of service. I hope you enjoy this video and that it helps you make an informed decision, or if nothing else, that it gives you a glimpse of what's behind the curtain. Hello YouTube travelers, and welcome to the Gentleman of Fortune channel. Join me on my travels around the world, and together we'll review the latest in flight and lounge offerings, find out how various airlines first and business class products stack up, sample their catering, and indulge in their finest champagnes. Together we'll experience the best of the best, and maybe some more obscure ones too. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. And now I invite you to sit back and relax as we get this next adventure underway. First class and business class passengers on this Japan Airlines flight are eligible to use One World Partner Airline, Americans, Flagship Lounge, and Admirals Club Lounge respectively. Unfortunately, as of June 2021, American Airlines still does not have their flagship lounge open meaning there's essentially no differentiation in classes of service. Not only is this disappointing, but it's also contrary to the approach taken by Japan Airlines at the other end, where in Tokyo Narita, their Sakura First Class Lounge, the only one operating, is open to both first class passengers as well as business class passengers. Again, there's essentially no differentiation. However, in the latter case, I consider it to be a net positive development, where nobody is deprived of an advertised benefit of their class of service. Before we get to the boarding process, I thought it worthy to point out the artistic renderings of one JAL team member who took the initiative to assuage the fears of passengers regarding the onboard air cleanliness and the filtration system. Back to the boarding process, first class is naturally prioritized, with business class following shortly thereafter. Additionally, there's a dedicated jet bridge that takes first class passengers to the L1 door. The business class is split into two cabins, with the vast preponderance of the 49 seats behind the L2 door. I, however, prefer the single-row business mini-cabin located immediately behind the first class section, which is labeled row 5. All of the business class suites offer great privacy and direct aisle access, though they're not optimized for a travel companion as they're staggered. The first class cabin features two rows in a 1-2-1 configuration. The first class suite itself is very stylish, featuring warm wood tones and a large, comfortable reclining leather seat. There's also an ottoman that allows you to eat with a companion in theory when the table is deployed. Back in business class, there's a bottle of water waiting for you at the seat, but otherwise no drink service on the ground. In first class, conversely, in addition to the bottle of water, you're offered a choice of welcome beverages, which includes champagne. Additionally, you're presented with a code for complimentary internet access. In business class, you'll find a pair of Sony noise-canceling headphones at your seat when you board. These headphones are of good quality and coincidentally happen to be the same model used on ANA in their business class as well. In first class, you can also expect to find a pair of headphones waiting for you at your seat for use with the in-flight entertainment system. However, unlike the Sony model in business class, here you should find Bose noise-canceling headphones, which are arguably of a better quality, producing better sound, and are also more comfortable. In business class, passengers receive an amenity kit from lifestyle brand Beams. Here you can see their spring pattern. Since the contents haven't changed, and for my own convenience, I'm recycling a clip of the inventory from a previous flight. Here you can see the winter pattern. These kits contain all of the basic necessities for a flight of this length, such as a dental kit, a pair of earplugs, A stick of lip balm.
an eye mask, a small package of tissues, one of the more unique items, which is a moisture mask, which you can wear underneath a face mask. Then there's this comprehensive list of care instructions for your Beams pouch. And lastly, there's some promotional material from Beams. In first class, you'll instead receive an amenity kit in a branded bag from fashion label Etro. This kit features many of the same amenities as well as some upgraded and additional items. For example, there's a small package that contains a vial of Etro's Shantung fragrance. We also find the addition of a folding brush comb combo. And here we have a tube of Etro branded lotion, as well as an Etro lip balm. There's also a single use cup of mouthwash. And naturally, the promotional material is for the respective brand. In addition to the unisex amenity kit from Etro, first class passengers are also gifted either the Shishido Men cosmetic kit or the Clay de Poe cosmetic mask. Inside of my kit is Total Revitalizer Cream, Hydrating Tonic, and Cleansing Foam. Since I already have a few of the Shishido kits, I asked if I might exchange it for the Clay de Poe gift. The flight attendants obliged and graciously gift wrapped it and presented it to me in a bag. Unbeknownst to me, they also included some snacks. So now let's take a look at the Clay de Poe gift. Oh, look at this. They included both of the gifts. So it looks like this kit includes serums one and two, as well as a soft cloth. And then for step three, I guess, is the mask itself. All the instructions are in Japanese, so I'm not really sure how you use it, but I suspect if you were inclined to use this, you probably already know. Now both first and business class passengers receive a plastic shoehorn in addition to a pair of plush slippers for traipsing around the cabin. But only in first class will you receive a pair of loungewear or pajamas. So if you're traveling in business, you may want to bring something comfortable to change into. As long as we're changing, 
Let's take a look around the laboratory, starting with the one in business class. You'll find a changing table in here, but otherwise there's not a lot of room to move around. You will find some additional amenities in here, however, such as mouthwash, dental kits, and moisturizer from Shishido brand Le Mandor. Over in first class, the moisturizer is clé de peau, and we enjoy real cloth towels. Additionally, there's more room in here, as well as fold-down padded shelves at floor level and above the commode so that you can easily change without having to stand on the floor. Once we slip into something more comfortable, we can contemplate what we're going to eat. In business class, this printed menu is a one-stop shop, highlighting all of your food and beverage choices. In first class, a leather folio at your suite includes a printed wine and beverage menu, as well as a separate menu for the dining options. It also includes a variety of immigration documents, as well as an in-flight duty-free order form. As we compare the menus between these two classes of service, I've employed the convention of annotating and displaying the business class menu on the left-hand side where applicable. Feel free to stop the video if you need more time to read or compare. In Japan Airlines first class, they serve a salon champagne on flights from Japan to the United States, and on this flight from Chicago to Tokyo, they serve the Cristal. As is to be expected, the first class wine list is much more comprehensive, featuring an array of curated whites and reds. Both classes offer a pair of choices each of sake and shochu, with the first class sake selection being notable for having either been served at the reception hosted by the Prime Minister, or developed exclusively for Japan Airlines to taste better at altitude. The liquors, spirits, and soft drink choices are extensive enough in first class to warrant their own pages in the menu. If you're not interested in alcohol, and or you're open to trying new things, you might consider the Queen of Blue Tea, which enjoys a champagne-like reverence. As the onboard service gets underway, the business class passenger's tray is covered with a tablecloth, and they're offered Japanese rice crackers, as well as a pre-dinner beverage. Up in first class, a more expansive table allows for a more elaborate place setting. And to start things off here, we have a chevre tart and a brazola wrapped mandarin slice. And of course, a pre-dinner beverage to wash it down with. Now you may be thinking to yourself, hang on a moment, he didn't compare the menus. Not to worry, I haven't forgotten. That's coming up next. Passengers in both business and first class can enjoy a Japanese meal with an impressive array of small dishes and different courses. If you're more interested in Western fare, this month's first class entrees look remarkably similar to those that were offered to me in business class on my last flight, but know that the presentation and experience will be elevated. By no means am I implying that the food won't be excellent in business class. I mean, look at the hors d'oeuvres. This appetizer assortment plate is very impressive. That's a whole lobster claw on top of that lobster tart. There's also some delicious duck with rhubarb jam, a marinated shrimp, and even a nod to Japanese cuisine with the pickled vegetables. In first class, the amuse-bouche featured this tomato gazpacho, which was light and had a beautiful flavor. And what's more, it contained a delectable surprise, this scampy lobster tail. A bread basket offers a variety of gourmet breads for the first class passenger. Today's first class hors d'oeuvre featured a lovely caviar service, which has been conspicuously absent from my last JAL first flights during the COVID era. They made up for it on this flight, believe it or not, when unsolicited they asked if they could provide a second caviar service so that their trainee could practice plating it up. Back in business class, the entree has been served. I selected the beef tenderloin today, as I often do when it's available. I have to tell you that this steak was phenomenal. To complement the beef, I enjoyed this 2016 Nipozana Chianti. In first class, they followed up the order with this perfectly cooked Chilean sea bass. It was so tender that I ate it with a spoon, which allowed me to not slow down when alternating between bites of the fish and the delicious vegetables and sauce. Next up for the voracious first-class passenger is the beef tenderloin, 
which is accompanied by a mashed potato stuffed pepper. Additionally, there's a poached egg and black truffle sukiyaki sauce. To be perfectly honest, I felt that the business class tenderloin was actually better. If memory serves, I paired it with the Chateau Lagrange Bordeaux. With the main courses complete, here's a look at the cheese courses, starting with business class. And here's the cheese course in first class. As you can see again, it's slightly more substantial. For the dessert in business class, I was offered this mousse with a subtle flavor befitting the lychee. In first class, a chocolate brownie with vanilla ice cream and red berries replaced the tiramisu which was listed on the menu. First class passengers can avail themselves of specialty coffees such as espresso or cappuccinos which sadly are not available in business class. If you weren't tired before, you probably will be from the impending food coma so let's have a look at the two respective seats transformed into beds. Here you can see the business class bed made up with a mattress pad, soft blanket, and comfortable pillow. And of course there's plenty of privacy. The first class cabin was designed to be light and airy. Of course in today's environment that could be construed as a little bit of a detractor. If you're in one of the center seats, there's a divider that can be raised for your privacy. Of course on my last two flights in JL first class, I was the only passenger in that cabin, so it really wasn't a factor. In fact, they made up the bed in one of the unoccupied seats so that I could move back and forth at my leisure. You're offered a mattress pad with two choices of firmness, as well as a down duvet and a very comfortable pillow. In business class or first class, if you elect to go to sleep too early, however, you run the risk of missing out on some incredible views of the mountains and glaciers in Alaska. Whether you enjoy the scenery, watch movies or listen to music on the in-flight entertainment system, or get some sleep in one of those two comfortable beds, the flight is long enough that it's safe to assume that at some point you'll be hungry again. JAL has you covered in that eventuality with anytime you wish dine on demand options. Here's a look at what's available from the business class menu. I enjoyed the JAL recommended soy simmered beef rice bowl with the Sky Time peach and grape mixed drink. Sometime later, I had the pork cutlet sandwich. Now let's have a look at how the first class menu stacks up. There's some similarities or overlap, but there's also some additional items that you can't get on the business class menu, such as the Beyond Burger. There's also a Western set plate, which features bibimbap, which is a Korean dish. I guess technically that's West from Japan as well as a Japanese set plate, which I try here. I paired this snack with the Hakura Kusai Saki. This smoked sea bass was cooked perfectly. It was incredible, really. Tender on the inside and seared and crispy on the outside. In addition, I was offered this Japanese delicacy of salmon and roe drizzled in egg yolk. This one didn't impress me as much. And here's a look at fermented soybeans, which create this unique stringy situation. I also gave in and tried the pumpkin panna cotta, which had a smooth texture and balanced flavor. If after all that you're still looking for something to nibble on, or just an excuse to wander around the cabin, here's a look at the grab-and-go options for each cabin. There's a great selection of sweet and savory snacks in business class. Up front, fancy chocolates and after-dinner drinks are on offer, but I'm sure they'd be happy to bring you any of the snacks from business class if you asked. And with that, I think we've considered all the prominent areas worthy of comparison between Japan Airlines first and business class products. That means it's time for Japan Airlines flight JL8009 to land at Tokyo's Narita International Airport and for me to wrap up this video review. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that if you did, you'll consider subscribing, 
leaving a like and hitting that notification bell. And as always, until the next video, safe travels. If you've stuck around this long, here's a little bonus for you. I previously made a video of Japan Airlines Sakura First Class Lounge in Tokyo's Narita International Airport, which you can see by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But at the time, I didn't include footage of the shower rooms, so here's a look at them now. Well, YouTube travelers, there you go. Once again, I wish you safe travels to Japan or wherever you might be going.